Good morning, brothers and sisters. As we return to this study here on Thursday morning, let us ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance and his direction. And let us also ask for his instruction as we open his word in this subject. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we come before you today, we ask, Father, for your blessing upon the doctor that will be working on Theodore, and we ask for your blessing upon Theodore as well. We thank you that Heidi has joined with us for this meeting. We ask now, Father, as we open your word, and we review some of the things that we were have been addressing this last week for your spirit, for your angels, and for your guidance. We need you to help open our minds that have been darkened by so many thousands of years of sin. Help us now to rightly divide your word. Direct us so that that which we do may bring glory to your character, <clears throat> may bring glory to your name, and help us to understand more of the time in which we live. For this, Father, we thank you <clears throat> and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, before us right now is the line that was being addressed yesterday. Now, as has been put out, <clears throat> we have eight specific waymarks. Taking a look at different verses, different times, different dates, and different events. Are we all clear on what we were addressing in the last few days with this line? I am. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch to the paper that you were emailed. We're going to go back through Judges 5 from the standpoint of what had been addressed by the translators in 1611 and then had been used later with the 1769 Bible. So as the book opens in Judges 5.1, then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes. I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. <clears throat> now, I noted in checking this in the 1769 Bible, that they break this book into sections. This does not occur often. So we're dealing here with the first section. Now, the verses that are being used to support these passages. The first of the footnotes, speaking of singing of Deborah and Barak, we wind up noting also in Exodus 15, 1, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. <clears throat> what was occurring here? 
Um, that was the uh, Exodus, the crossing of the Red Sea. Did I so miss they, something? <laughs> what, what's that? I was a little distracted. Did I miss something? I, I don't think so. So in Exodus 15, 1, we have the events after the crossing because they have now noted that Pharaoh and his armies had been encompassed by the sea when they had feared that they were going to be defeated, right? Yes. Okay. Now, the next portion, Psalms 18.1, we have here David's psalm of thanksgiving for God's mighty deliverances and manifold blessings. Yet, if we read this more completely, this is to the chief musician, the psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. So, songs like this in the Bible are offered as praise at times when people have seen great answers to prayer. Can we agree with that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, the second of the footnotes, stating, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel. We see that later in Psalms 18, which is again a psalm of David, where he notes, It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. In this situation, do we not see that this is a support to the verse that states, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord? For in any way are we to seek vengeance upon those that look to harm us? No. Not to my knowledge. So this lesson within this with judges is teaching us several major points. Now, the third footnote I found most interesting. When the people willingly offered themselves becomes the statement of Deborah and Barak. And the translators gave reference here to 2 Chronicles 17, 16, along with 1 Maccabees 2, 42. Now, is there anything here that we should note? Well, there's the offered them willingly, it looks like. Offered themselves willingly. Okay. So. And then the other one was voluntarily devoted. Well, this portion of, of Second Chronicles 17, 16 <clears throat> should be noted that this took place during the time of Jehoshaphat. So here we are given a listing that says, and next him was Amasiah, the son of Zikri, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord and with him 200,000 mighty men of valor. But the portion from 1 Maccabees speaks 
there came unto him a company of Assyrians, who were mighty men of Israel, even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. Does anyone have an idea who the Assyrians were? Well, okay, so I've got um, men endowed with grace, Psalms 9, 39, 5, and 148, 14. They were the maintainers of the Mosaic law against something. One of the things that I, I have come to understand, since I, I do not and have not studied Hebrew as Theodore has, when I'm doing a comparison, whenever I see something like this that comes from the Apocrypha, where you have a vowel at the beginning, I have to ask, is there not supposed to be a consonant that may be silent? So at this, at this case, in doing some checking on the Assyrians, we may find that, as is pointed out in the chat, very good, that these are the Hasidic Jews. Now, are we familiar with the Hasidic Jews in any manner? I had one of those in my class one time, and uh, she was extremely strict about deportment and clothing, like really a Jewish lawkeeper. One of the things I've learned about the Hasidic Jews, <clears throat> they are indeed very, very strict about their clothing. They're very, very strict about their diet. I mean, Everything about them has a, a very rigid understanding of the law and how it applies to their daily lives. If we were to look at this today, and we were to look at this in a spiritual sense, who could we say were the Hasidic Jews within the movement? Wouldn't we look at this, that those of us that are choosing to study the law, that are choosing to study what God has presented so that we may more clearly follow him and his character, that we are representing the Hasidic Jews for this time? It's entirely possible. Because as this states from the Apocrypha, even all such as were what devoted under the law voluntarily are we being pressed in any way to follow the law or are we doing this voluntarily this is all voluntarily i'd say i'm pressed in in god's spirit i mean when I stray from it, I sure get convicted. <laughs> I've been finding it very interesting as I've had conversations with others. There are so many today 
within the church and even some within the movement that make choices that do not follow after the health message, that do not follow after God's law, that do not follow in any manner with what we have been understanding of God's character. So we have quite a bit yet that we are learning. Now, the other thing that I, I found interesting about this coming from 1 Maccabees 2.4.2 here again if we were to take 242 and add to it 515 we would again wind up with a 777 and I've had to wonder if the 777 doesn't point to that which we need to understand at this time I'm sorry where are you where, where did you pick that up again okay right over here in the third footnote, 1 Maccabees 242, what I was reading from. Yeah. Now, as we have been looking at this with the 777, let's say we go back to this for a second. Oh, come on. We have this 777 going from November 9th of 2019 to December 25th of 2021. All right. In this situation, beginning here with November 9th, do we not have those that are choosing to voluntarily investigate what the law of God says and begin to follow as we are finding what the law of God says? Um, I'm sorry, could you, could you restate that? In this time period of 777 days. Right. Do we not see that there are those that are choosing to study from Scripture and Spirit of Prophecy to understand more of what God says to us at this time that we need to accept at this time? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say that there's there's some that are and some that it's not. Those that are studying, are they doing so because they're being pressed to do so, or are they doing so willingly? I, I don't know. I haven't got anybody pushing me to do this. Uh, I don't know about you. Pretty sure that Angela doesn't. <laughs> she right. pushes herself. Every, everybody pushes themselves, I believe. Okay. Oh, I'm talking about the morning study group here. I'm speaking in the morning study group. I'm also speaking about, you know, what we've what we have been studying and encountering on Sabbath as well. Mm. All I'm saying is that this 777 days may represent those that are searching God's word to understand more of his character. That's agreeable. Okay. So, hear ye, O kings, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Here again, 
Moses was reminding the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 32 of what had occurred. And he is reminding the, chil the children of Israel of their great need of dependence upon our creator. Give ye, give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine sh shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. And then Psalms 2, be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Are we to depend upon man for our understanding of the word of God? No. So those that choose to be voluntarily devoted unto the law, that are choosing to search the law would be those choosing to use Miller's rules. Would that be far-fetched in your mind? No. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this first stanza, as it is presented with the translators, could we then apply this first stanza with November 9, 2019 on the line? What do you think? I think I need to hear that again. Okay, this first stanza, this first portion of Judges 5. <clears throat> Can this, this portion giving praise to God and outlining those that are voluntarily following the word of God, can we apply this portion with <clears throat> what we are seeing here with the the first way mark that we've ascribed to November 9, 2019. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't, we, that, uh, that section, that first five, I guess it's the first seven verses we've attributed to the September 7th date, right? In 2019. I understand that. That's darkness. Okay. So if the first stanza then was to be this portion of the darkness, we would have actually the first and the second stanzas then being in darkness. Would praise lead us out of darkness? Would what lead us out of darkness? Would praise lead us out of darkness? I don't think so. I mean, praise doesn't give us anything. I mean, if somebody's praising you, no, that doesn't bring you out of darkness. Does, <laughs> praising God does. Praising God does. Okay. Yeah, like singing hymns when you're going through an intense trial. It works for me beautifully. Right. So what was the what was the tenor of the first three verses of Judges five? Were they praising Deborah yes. and Barak? Or were they praising no, they, weren't, God? they weren't praising Deborah and Barak, but Deborah and Barak were praising God. Okay. And weren't they leading the children of Israel to also praise God? I would say so. They okay. were leadership. Okay, so
Here's the second stanza, the beginning of it. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. Or as the alternate Hebrew would say, the mountains flowed from before the Lord. Now, this is the second stanza for this part of the, of the chapter. The supporting verses that the translators had used remained with Deuteronomy 33, but then had other portions as well to support their choice of words. In Deuteronomy 33, 2, <clears throat> and he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Spiritually, are we yet waiting for the Lord to come from Sinai and for him to shine forth from Mount Paran for this movement? The wording is similar to what we're waiting for. Okay. In Psalm 68, 7, O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness. Have we not been in a wilderness for many years because of the teachings of man rather than the teachings of God? Yes. Now, <clears throat> We are going to come to a, a, a point soon where Christ is going to leave from the most holy place. When he leaves from the most holy place, what exactly is the major event that's going to occur? So, uh, the Sunday law. Michael stands up during that time, right? Michael stands up. Michael leaves the holy place. What is going to happen when he leaves the holy place? Well, we're going to be without an intercessor. Oh, yeah. William, would you please repeat what you said? I said probation ends for mankind. Thank you. Now, if probation ends for mankind when Christ leaves the most holy place, does that mean that a warning message has then already been given? Uh, yes, I would have to say yes. Where is this warning message to originate? Well... Our studies have led us to the church, or actually the 144,000, is supposed to be given that warning message. There will be those that will be giving the warning message. Agreed. Who are they to begin giving the warning message to? SDA. Or the Levites. It, that warning message must begin at the house of God. Yeah, that's right. Here, here I'm using the symbolism that we found in Ezekiel 8 and 9. 
Because if the warning message begins at the house of God, <clears throat> the warning message will begin with the ancients of the house of God or with the leadership. Yes. Okay. So we are clear on that point, right? Yes. So when Christ stands up and leaves the most holy, will the earth tremble? Oh, are we I don't say so. Are we not shown in Revelation that this will be a day when the earth will be shook and the heavens will be shook? Right. Are we not told in the book of Joel of a day of darkness and great gloominess? Yes. So symbolically... This with Judges 5-4 is also pointing forward to that day. That's apparently. Now Judges 5-5, five, five, the mountains flowed before from the from before the Lord, even that Sinai from before the Lord God of Israel. When the mountains begin to melt with fervent heat, we are then seeing the earth cleansed by fire. Will this? Yeah, but doesn't that happen, you know, uh, after the return, the second return? Correct, but does it not happen? Uh, spiritually or symbolically when this message goes out? Because what are mountains, according to William Miller? The mountains could be governments. So when Christ comes out from the most holy, is he not preparing to lay off his robes as high priest and assume his role as king? Well, yeah. So will the governments of earth have any authority before him? Oh, no. Uh, Mel? No, no. So there's quite a bit of this. This Sim is all show and tell, right, at that point. Agreed. <laughs> so, when we're looking at this as being part of a time of darkness, as we were looking at this, this line, symbolically, once we're coming out of the darkness, we start to see things quite a bit more clearly than what we've ever seen before. Yeah, it was like we were we were blind before. Okay. I mean, that's a lot of clarity <laughs> at that point. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Okay. Now we come on to the third stanza. In the days of Shamgar the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. But if we look at the alternate Hebrew, the verse would read, in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the walkers of paths walked through crooked ways. Now, 
we're being given a reference to a prior judge, Shamgar. We're also being given reference to this of JL. Do we remember who JL was? Uh, yeah. Who's JL? The, no, I'm going to have to say I don't. I was thinking of one thing, and it's not. Okay. JL is a woman, right? Yeah, that's the that's the tent spike girl. And who was she married to? I uh, can't think of his name. Eber. Exactly. Now, see, that, that name always sticks out for me because when I was a teenager, I had a doctor whose name was Heber Ruth. Now, why are the days of Shamgar and the days of JL being compared together? What can we say about this? We have a very direct explanation of things with JL. As you had said, brother, JL was the, quote, tent spike girl. The wife of Heber that takes an am a, a hammer, not really knowing to begin with that she is dealing with Sisera, the general that was greatly troubling Israel, the one that was fleeing because the battle that he sought to win had turned so horribly against him. Now, Heber, of course, was a Kenite. Sisera thought he was safe with the Kenites. JL discerned who this man was. As he laid asleep in their tent, JL, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took an hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary, and so he died. And we find this in Judges 4.21. Now, are we given a lot having to deal with Shamgar? Not really, <clears throat> but we are given from Judges 3.31 that Shamgar had followed Ehud and Shamgar was the son of Anath, which slew the Philistines, six, of, of the Philistines, 600 men with an ox goad, and he delivered Israel. Both parties, Shamgar, the judge, J.L., Heber's wife, both effectively delivered Israel. So in both cases, are we not shown that we need to have a unity of purpose? that 
there needs to be within the movement a unity of understanding so that the purposes of God can be accomplished. Amen. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. Agreed. Now, can we afford to walk on crooked paths? Can we afford to walk in crooked ways? Or are we to walk on the straight path, the straight and narrow path? Straight, narrow, with an upgrade, an upward grade. So we have a lot yet to see accomplished. Right. Now, Judges 5 7, the inhabitants of the villages ceased they ceased in israel until that i deborah arose that i arose a mother in israel so we've established in the past that whenever we're seeing some kind of a doubling and here we have two doublings ceased and arose is there anything symbolic that we can apply to this portion and in this verse now as an aside as i'm looking at this from the chat the lines represent straight and narrow paths way marks represent measure. That's well stated. But is there anything symbolic that we can find here from this with Judges If we are following this correctly, could we not apply that ceased could apply to the second angel's message? Because if we are giving glory to God, are we giving glory then to the idols of our own making? Well, no. And then in arising, as Deborah arose, does this and can this also not show the angel of Revelation 18? Because is there not a specific requirement that we rise up and give a message then at the house of God. And as such, give a representation of what it means to worship God in spirit and in truth. So can we apply Judges 5-7 to the second angel and the, the angel of Revelation 18. Judges 5 8. They choose, they chose new gods, then was war in the gates. There was a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. It says, was there a shield? Right. Was there a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? 
What did we determine when we were looking at this in, in Judges chapter 4? Did they have shields and spears at no. that time? No, they didn't, did they? No. No, they were being they, they were being oppressed, and your oppressor won't allow you to have weapons. Spiritually today using Miller's rules. Is it seen that the movement is unarmed? Well, yeah. We've got do, we, do we have the weapons, the understanding of the Bible from college degrees no well i don't <laughs> neither do i does anyone attending this meeting today have a college degree in biblical hermeneutics not me uh, not me all i have is miller's rules okay now <clears throat> In this with Judges 5.8. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Are we to choose a new way of studying scripture? Only if you think the old way is the wrong way. Right. I mean, um, it would have to be a new way for us because we've been trained not to use these tools. I mean, I call them tools. Right. But now we do. We knew now we're using them in, in more um, uh, with much more practice than we did before. It, 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 in my estimation, that in the beginning, this is where we were heading the whole time, but nobody knew that. They just kept seeing these things pop up, and then people would get a little full of themselves and think it's this way and that way, and then disappointment would come. And uh, again, somebody would go, "Well, uh, let's think about this. Where did we go wrong?" At? And then so we'd study to figure out where we went wrong, and then correct ourselves. And that's how we've established Miller's rules much more clearly um, in the way we do things. I mean, some people think that they're following Miller's rules, but when they're guessing, it's not following the rules because you shouldn't have to guess. This, this should be told to you through the scriptures. Okay. I mean, that's my opinion on it. So... Can we then confirm the application of the first angel's arrival on the 9th of November of 2019? Was there a division that began on that day that led to the war within the gates? Oh, yeah, for sure. Sorry for that. Good. Yeah, what's your last name? Turner. Theodore? Yeah. What up? I have your address. You're in Missoula still? Yeah. Perfect. Have you all checked in? You're going to have a seat here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Theodore, turn off Theodore your mic. Dennis, Dennis chair. <laughs> 
so we're updated anyway. <laughs> we're definitely updated right now. Okay, so we can agree then that the arrival of the first angel's message to fear God led to a division within the movement where there was war within the gates. And we're making this application for the 9th of November of 2019. Now, as we look at this with not just the increase of knowledge, but also with January 11th of 2020, we're examining whether or not there was a shield or a spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. So the message, would we agree then that the message was being formalized as we were coming to understand things on January 11th of 2020? Can we accept this second way, Mark? I'm not sure. Um, restate that. I mean, say that again, please. Okay. The way that the line is before us. With Judges 5, verse 8, the point has been given that the first half of this verse, they chose new gods, then was war in the gates, gives application to the arrival of the first angel's message. That the second portion, or 5b, the formalization of the first angel's message was, was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? And that January 11th, 2020 is then the date that is applied for this. Can we agree? to this point I would say yeah as far as formalization but then the examining starts from July 18th onward but we're going to get to July 18th as being the arrival of the second angel's message So is January 11th of 2020, in our understanding, is this helping to equip those that are studying with a shield and a spear? Or are we learning of our great need of dependence upon God and his word? Oh, man, we could take the shield as the shield of faith and the sword as the word of God. We're learning how to use both. They have to go hand in hand. Okay. So, so what, what went on on January 11th, Zach? That was, that was the day that Daniel Fontenot gave a study on the approaching doom, part five, which brought clarity to um, Jeff to find more light. Well, if, if it brought clarity to Elder Jeff to help help find more light, did it not help us to look to our great need for the light that <clears throat> has been given before us? Well, I think that was the whole that was the whole um, uh, what we got out of that whole scenario with Jeff um, picking up on that light. Yes, I would have to say yes. Okay.
So, that would place then that the third stanza of this psalm would then be correctly placed. We've now gone through the first two as being a portion of the darkness, the third as giving us an increase of knowledge, and that we've placed, seen its placement both on the arrival and the formalization of the first angel's message. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we come to the third way mark. April 26, 2020. Theodore is emailing to Elder Jeff that the prediction of July 18th on a may be one on a line of failed predictions. Now the the situation here is that the placement is for verse 5 9. Here again, verse 5, 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. And the translators, again, gave reference back to Judges 5, 2. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Now, in the part that we just addressed who were those that willingly offered themselves the head something or other had I can't remember. the Hasidics Hasidics that's it who were mighty men of Israel even all such as were voluntarily devoted to the law Right, that was the, that was, he's saying that that was uh, the 2020. Okay, now. Uh, April 26, 2020, failed predictions. So. Line of failed predictions, that was it. I want, uh, knowing that Theodore's in the dentist chair, I want to thank him for taking the time to put this to say that without Jeff's revelation on January 11th of 2020, that he would not have had the model for the 777 chiasm showing the failed predictions. Okay, thanks for the clarification that you're not in the chair yet. It's just that we heard you earlier. We thought you were. So, in this situation, we have the empowerment being shown on April 26th. The verse that we're using to support this empowerment is, my heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. It is those that were choosing to study that we're willingly choosing to study even when others were being less than supportive that have helped to understand and make it clear for us this empowerment. Now, can we agree that the empowerment for the first angel's message likely occurred with what we're seeing in this line on April 26th. Do we have reason to doubt the application of verse 9 
with the empowerment of the first angel's message on this line. No, I don't see any problem. At this point, no. Okay. At this point. All right. So now the application of July 18th, 2020, on this line showing it as the arrival of the second angel's message. Here, the verse as it reads, Speak ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment, and walk by the way. The alternate Hebrew reads, Meditate, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment, and walk by the way. Are we not to consider carefully our need to give glory to God? Are we not to consider carefully the fact that Babylon is fallen, is fallen. But at that point in time, on July 18th, did we not experience a disappointment? Yes, we did. Most definitely. Does this disappointment line up with October 22nd, 1844? Yes, we 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 yeah we've come to that conclusion. Yes. <clears throat> so in this situation, what date was it? Why? I said. Sent does July eighteenth of twenty twenty also line up with October twenty second, eighteen forty four? I just checked. So in this in this situation, okay. Now from the uh, from the chat, Theodore is posting that it lines up with July eighteenth, eighteen forty four. So we would have three dates. So that's that's in Snow's letters, right? I believe so. Because I it is if I'm remembering the study properly, July eighteenth, eighteen forty four, was the last of Samuel Snow's letters. Yeah, I think the end last okay. letter. So this is Samuel Snow's letters, and also with Ezekiel twenty. So we have multiple witnesses on this point. Because that was also the 10th day of the fifth month, July 18th. So are we not repeating directly with this line? what we have seen with the Millerites so far. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's uh, paralleling pretty good. Okay. So symbolically, what do we see then from Judges 5.10? When we are told, meditate ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. So we determined that the white asses was uh, in relationship to Ellen White um, and the uh, knowledge of, uh, you know, Ishmael's boys. The Ishmaelites. All right. So we're making the application 
on the white asses, are we not then able to point this back onto both of the charts? Because whenever we're dealing with the ass, are we not dealing with it? Oh, Israel? yeah, absolutely. Point right straight back to him. Okay. This is this is how we got here. <laughs> They're right. sitting over there to your left shoulder there. Exactly. Now, the comment from the chat was that Jerusalem fell when the siege ended on July 18th of 586 B.C. So yet again, another portion, another example of why July 18th has been so very important. Can we choose to set aside the symbol of July 18th? I would have to say, you know, this isn't really important to me. July 18th isn't, it's really, it's really, it's not important. To me. It's important to God, though. Okay. And um, he seems to think, he seems to think that it's really important because of all the, the symbols that he's used to point it out to us. So, I mean, if we're not paying attention, we're on our own. And do we want to be on our own at this time? No. Okay. okay. Now, for the formalization, we go on to verse 511. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. What was important about going down to the gates? I'm going to repeat my question here in a moment, but I'm going to, I'm going to digress into the, the comment from the chat. It says 96 days between July 18th and October 22nd. Could the 96 days represent the six, nine of 17 or the 18 Sabbath prayer? Um, help me understand your notation here, please. I wasn't sure whether it was June 9, 17 or, 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 or 18, but I know Jeff made a couple of Sabbath prayers on those years. And I just, when I saw the 96 days, I just reversed it. Okay. And I thought, well, maybe it has some meaning here. Are we talking about the prayer that he offered in Italy? Right. Yeah. All right. I don't have an answer for you. That might be something that we might have to address later. But this 511 thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I was looking at that earlier, and evidently there's a talk out there of it being the angel symbol. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of, I didn't understand it myself. I didn't really look too far into it. But if you if you put five one one meaning, up, oh, that's what I searched. Okay. You'll see something there. All right. So you did a a search on five one one. I said five one one meaning on a Google search. Okay. And. Uh, the very first thing that popped up was uh, if you're constantly seeing the number 511, it's it's your angel telling you the change is on the horizon. 
<laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> right? Okay. So. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Yeah, can you repeat that again? It, it said, if you are constantly seeing the number 511, it is your angels telling you that change is on the horizon. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. Who are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water? The if, movement was when Nashville failed. Exactly. Yeah. And going down to the gates, I have in my margin here, means be ready to defend themselves. And why would they have to defend themselves at the gates? Because we got a lot of scorn when the Nashville prophecy failed. Okay, but if, if we look at, let's say, the 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 story in the book of Ruth. Did they not go down to the gates? Because was that not where judgment was meted out? It's not just that, exactly. but whoever is in possession of the gates is possession is in possession of the city. Okay. Right. Because the it's gate like a valve that controls movement in and out. Right. So the, the gates are where the leaders of the city would meet, right? That's right. That's also where justice is meted out. Daniel sat in the gate. Okay. <laughs> Losing your brother, William. Yeah, you're, you didn't come through very clearly. I was probably wrong anyway, so <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I I don't always I, I will not accept that because you've had a lot of very good points that you have made. Uh, I here here. It was Malachi. Malachi was sitting in the gates too, wasn't it? I think that's possible. I think you're right. Okay, if you if you take a look at um, at the chat just briefly, um, Theodore has posted that his dentist's identification number is two five two. Do we see any symbolism with this? We have to. <laughs> it makes me laugh. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Okay, now the other the other comment that has been made, 511 has 525 million results or thousand results like the 525 leading to 1225. Also for me, it shows as the phone number for travel information. Yeah, that's that's what I originally had thought that was. Okay. And I was that was what I was actually trying to come up with was that that what he just said. Where are we traveling to? <laughs> uh, the heavenly city. Do we really wish to fall off the path? Uh, no. No. I'm just happy it's real wide right now because you know this has been tough. Right. Okay. So on this, we are coming to this verse where 
symbolically those that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, they shall rehearse the righteousness of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. <clears throat> then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. In all of this, delivered from Islam, praising and rehearsing the righteousness of God, then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates after they have repeated these righteous acts before the inhabitants of his villages. Now, so what, what's that? Uh, do you see what that number is um, for the righteous acts, the Hebrew number? I didn't look at it. No, it's six, 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 six. <laughs> OK. <laughs> it just kind of popped out and stuck me right in the face. Kind of interesting the way that that jumps out, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it comes out in the most inexplicable places, like my father's uh, grave marker number. Okay. Which is? 666. Okay. At Riverside National Cemetery. Oh, my. Mm, yeah. Now, the next of the way marks, the empowerment of the second angel. December 25th of 2021. The close of the 777. We have verse 512. And verse 512 is awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak and lead thy captivity captive, thy son of Abinoam. Why, when we have a double doubling around Deborah, and the instruction to utter a song, and then we are telling Barak to arise and lead thy, ca lead thy captivity captive, why would we place this as the empowerment of the second angel's message? Well, the Levites uh, rejected the second angel. The Levites rejected the second angel. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, leave the captives captive. Leave them alone. What's that saying? Well, let's look at it here again. I'm I'm not I'm not as skilled with Hebrew as Theodore is. Leave the captivity captive. Right. I guess I'm just like a... <clears throat> okay. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking at this, we have a word, Shabbat, which is to transport into captivity or to bring away. And carry, then we, carry away, lead, lead. There's a lot more to it, but it's, but it's all basically saying the same thing. We have Shabbat Shabi, which could mean to carry away the exiled. Oh, I thought I, I misread the word. I thought it was leave the captivity captive. <laughs> okay. It's, it's lead. So I'm lead, wrong. Yes. <laughs> so if, if we are to carry away those that have been exiled, 
would this not be telling us that in carrying away the exiled, that we would be saving those that had been in the wilderness, the exiled? The lost, house of Israel? the lost house of Israel? Right. Would that make sense to you? It seems to make sense, yeah. Now, I don't remember all of the, you know, the rest of the um, note that Theodore had made here. But the 20th day of the ninth month has a an interesting application. So we're looking at this sixth way mark and placing with this chapter 5, verse 12. We are looking at this at the close of 111 weeks or 777 days. So, does it make sense to us that verse 512 should apply with the empowerment of the second angel's message? For is it not for us to understand that the second angel's message of Babylon is fallen, is fallen, is giving glory to God to open the minds and the eyes and the ears of those that have been struggling with what's been going on within the church and the world. Yeah, seems to be the opposite of that. Right. Fallen is fallen or awake the wake. Right. So on this line. Would, uh, um, would it, wouldn't that be the fourth angel's message too? I don't know that I would play it that far because the first what has to happen is people need to recognize that Babylon is fallen to be able to recognize their need with the second angel's message right now when we've looked at this in the past The application that I have been led to make is that the first angel's message is very much like the first test that Christ was enduring in the wilderness, which was appetite. The second test was very much like presumption. So the second angel's message that Babylon is fallen is fallen. If we're if we're just going to presume that the world is going to go on as it is, then we're making a, a grave error. The third angel's message regarding the love of the world. is also about that with the mark of the beast. But if we take this even to a, a deeper point, then the first angel's message is the equivalent of the courtyard where the sacrifices were given. The second angel's message was 
the equivalent of the holy place where we find the light, the true light of God's word. And the third angel's message would be where we are standing before the mercy seat in judgment. Now, the fourth angel's message is given as a repeat for that with the second angel's message. On that, I would agree. But where is it directed to? And who is it directed to? And these are questions I think we're going to have to address on Sunday because we are coming close to the end of our time together. Now, do we have any other questions or comments regarding what we've what we've been addressing today? It just seems to reinforce what we had. So when I had looked at this and with the paper that was sent to everyone, we have now come into four stanzas. as they were broken out by the translators of the King James Bible. There are four stanzas left to address. So we still have the formalization. We still have the empowerment of the third angel's message to, to consider. And then we have the arrival of the fourth angel's message and its formalization and empowerment. So for us right now, going forward from Judges 5.13 to the end of the book, which would place us at Judges 5.31, we have a lot of ground yet to cover. Take the paper. See what else you may find symbolically, <clears throat> literally, or other. And let's be prepared on Sunday to see if there isn't something further that we're able to apply in this, in this situation for this study. Any other thoughts or comments? Okay, shall we then close with prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we have spent together. We thank you for the different ways in which your word may be opened for the manner in which your word may be understood. We thank you for the events that we are seeing, the applications that are able to be made, and for the blessings that you are providing. Direct us now, be with us as we go through this day. Help us so that we may consider that which we have studied. May your will be done so that may your character be shown to all with whom we come in contact. For this we pray, for this we thank you, and this we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.